Yes. Uh, so we have looked at verses 1, 2, and 3 of chapter 6. Uh, we're not quite finished with the whole parent-children relationships because there's just one more verse, and that would be verse 4. Uh, if someone could please read out verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Yeah, so here uh, the advice that is given, of course, you know, the Greek word over there uh, is literally fathers in the same way the Greek uses the word man all over the place. Uh, but it's talking more about, you know, um, wherever man is used, we know, right, it's not talking about only men. It's talking about humans in the same way over here when it says fathers, it is true that it is specifically speaking to fathers you know but then in our um, in the way we run our homes we can think of it more as parents so not just fathers but both parents you know um, we need to bring up our children in the word of God teaching them that this is what God says in his word and we need to live uh, you know in obedience to the word so we teach them that we tell them what the word says. We inform them about it. We educate them on all that the Bible says. You know, that's something that we must do. Uh, cannot just leave it to, uh, you know, Sunday school teachers to do that. Uh, we are expected, the parents are expected to teach the children all that the word of God says. And then so that they can start living their lives in accordance with this word of God. So we teach that. But how we teach it makes a big difference. If it is taught in a loving manner, then uh, you know the child is more willing to accept it. On the other hand, if it is imposed on the child like a uh, like a kind of uh, bitter rule to follow, or uh, there's you know always threat of punishment, when the child grows up hating the word of God, you know because of the wrong attitude of the parent. Um, so how we do the impartation, how we you know do this training and instruction in the, um, of the Lord uh, is very, very important uh, because if we, if we do it in the wrong way, the child could actually grow up hating the things of God and hating the parents and all of that. Uh, so um, it says over here, um, um, you know, don't provoke them, you know, to anger. So that's regarding the um, um, parent-children relationships. And then uh, it next moves on to uh, slave and master relationships. Um, now, in, in our modern uh, context, uh, you know, there's not supposed to be any slavery. I mean, in, and in some parts of the world, you still find, you know, slavery and bonded labor and all of that going on, uh, including in our country. Um, so uh, that is there, but you know, here we will have to think in terms of you know employers and employees uh, because uh, most of us are not in that system of slavery. But over here, uh, when he is still writing, you know, these words, he is talking to literal slaves who are still within the slave system, and by then, slavery, of course, had become more evil. In Old Testament times, it was a respectable tradition. Of a man would choose voluntarily, you know, he would um, he would say from now on, I and my family will be under your covering. We will be your slaves, and you know, uh, you have to take full responsibility for us. And so, uh, when the man would purchase, you know, the, when the owner would purchase a slave and his entire household, he would literally become responsible for them, you know, to provide for them, to take care of them, and in turn, the slave and his family would serve these people in every way. It's a very, very different uh, system. By the time of um, you know the New Testament, uh, with all these uh, Roman practices and Greek practices coming in, yes, slavery had deteriorated. Uh, you know, it was no longer a noble tradition. It was uh, it was more oppressive, more evil. Uh, so, in that kind of a setup, this is what Paul is you know writing, and he says. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. I mean, the slaves sitting over there in that congregation would be shocked that they're expected to be nice to their masters, you know. Um, so because things were not really as wonderful now, you know, as they had been in older 
times in 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 ancient times and yet this is the you know instruction uh, that uh, paul gives uh, so they are supposed to be respectful uh, they are supposed to be sincere in as if they are obeying christ himself that's the command that he gives and so if that is the command that he gave slaves uh, you know how much more seriously we should take that command now because you know we are not actually slaves in fact we get paid for our services um, and you know we are in fact um, in some of our jobs we have you know additional perks and this and that so we are not really being ill treated a, a, you know like the ancient day slaves or anything like that so if they were being asked to obey as if they're obeying christ we also should be having that same honorable attitude you know in the way we serve in our workplaces now over here it does not mean that you cannot go to the lord and cry out to him if injustice is being done to you so all of that is there you know the the employer the boss uh, may not be a good person he may be completely self centered and only care about his own interests uh, but, and so you know we go to the lord and we pray uh that the lord will show us fairness the lord will grant us justice we do all of that when it comes to the actual work that that we do we do it sincerely so yes um we can go to the lord and ask him for recompense we can ask him to you know back us up when the boss is ill treating us uh so all of that is there the the you know that that aspect of justice and that aspect of fairness all that is there we can go to the lord with those matters but when it comes to the actual doing the work getting the work done we give a 100% you know we do that uh, because we are doing it as if we are obeying christ himself and so it says in verse 7 serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the lord not people and it explains why we need to have this kind of an attitude verse 8 it says because you know you know we are supposed to really know this not just wish or hope but we are supposed to know this because you know that the lord will reward each one for whatever good they do so irrespective of what kind of a person those that employer is we choose from our side to remain faithful to remain sincere because we know our master's eyes you know our heavenly master's eyes are upon us and he will take care he will you know reward us he will you know provide the justice when the time comes so uh, we cannot use the excuse of a uh, you know of a bad boss to shirk work or be lazy in the way we do things we choose to continue honoring the lord you know um, in, in in our work so um, that's regarding the attitude of the employee towards the employer and then in verses 9 uh, yeah verse 9 you have um paul addressing those who are the employers who are the bosses and this is what he says to them if someone could read out uh, ephesians 6 verse 9 and masters treat your slaves in the same way do not treat in them since you know that he who is bought he who is bought their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him so here uh, the just because you know the uh, slaves have been informed and told that they should really serve that they should really be respectful that they should really you know uh, do their job well this does not mean that you know god is taking the side of the employers it's not it's not that god is taking the side of the boss god is equally saying to the boss as well you know be careful how you treat your employee he says over here do not threaten them you know do not do anything that will harm them or hurt them you must keep even the employee's interests in mind when you are a master why because both of you you the your employee and you you are under the control of a higher authority and he will not show any favoritism uh, if uh, the employer is the one who is doing wrong god will take action to the employee who is doing wrong god will take action so we both are under the heavenly master so we should be aware of that whether we are employer or employee we do our work carefully 
knowing that the all knowing one who can see the motives of our heart who can see the attitude of our heart he is watching he is listening and so we need to be careful how we you know uh, do our work uh, so that's regarding the employers and the employees and um, so uh, having finished that section uh, which talks about you know um, which talks about interpersonal relationships using the way of love in the same way christ used the way of love in the same way he walked in the way of love we also are supposed to walk in the way of love in all of our relationships having concluded that section now he uh, you know paul moves into a new section and uh, that would be verse 10 onwards and this is the instruction the opening line with which he begins verse 10 so if someone could read out verse 10 Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in His mighty power. Okay, so everything that's going to follow now, you know, in in the rest of this particular uh, portion, this particular passage, it's all going to be uh, flowing out of this opening line. So the opening line over here is finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Uh, the word used over here, it's you know, the Greek word is finally, be endu namu okay that's the greek word that is used over there i'm sure i killed the pronunciation but anyway that's the word e n d u n a m o o okay so you are supposed to be endu namu um which basically means something of extremely great power you're supposed to be that powerful okay that's the command that uh, you know is being given over here to be very very powerful you know we all are very familiar with this you know alfred nobel when he invented something very powerful he wanted to give it a name which will kind of bring out the great power of this thing which he has invented and so he hunted around for a good term for it and then he thought this would be the perfect word for it so this is the word that he chose you know because endunamu is based is from your root word you know dunamos so uh, uh, that's the word that he used for his invention to show how powerful his invention is and uh, so so dynamos um, you know is basically um the word which talks about great power and alfred nobel used that word for his dynamite which he invented okay so um, we are supposed to be full of dynamos we are supposed to be very very powerful how on earth are we normal human beings you know everyday people how are we supposed to be that powerful we are endu namu you know we are literally uh, have great power how in the lord when we are united to him when we are abiding in him his power flows into us what kind of a power is it it says be strong in the lord and in his mighty power you know we are over here it's talking about your resurrection power because he's already explained right what kind of a power it is he's already explained that earlier so he does not go back into that entire um, you know teaching but we are supposed to remember that that is the kind of power that he is talking about you know in this entire letter so he says be very very powerful how by being united in christ you know by abiding in him because the the stronger your connection is with him the more strongly you are abiding and connected to him the more easily his power his resurrection power will flow into you and then you will really be very very powerful okay is 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 the advice so the basic basic concept over here is that if you are in the lord if your connection to him is strong if you are really abiding in him submitting to him walking according to his leading then his power will keep flowing into you and you will be very very greatly powerful you will be dynamos powerful you'll be you know you'll be that powerful um so um so uh that is step 1 you need to be powerful by maintaining your union with the lord but second it's not just enough to be powerful you must also guard and protect yourself okay so he starts off by saying 
you know be strong in the lord you know be powerful in the lord uh, and one way of retaining your power is you know um, guarding yourself so that satan does not come uh, because you see satan is very very scared of powerful christians right so if if, if you have a believer walking around with uh, this, this kind of dunamis power in him satan is not going to be very you know uh, happy with the idea because um, uh, powerful believers bring down the gates of hell so you know it's it's a so such people will automatically come under attack uh, satan will try to diffuse the power he'll try to make them powerless in some way or the other using some strategy or the other and so to maintain our power we need to stay on guard we need to protect ourselves so what paul is saying is you are no ordinary people you are people who are united with the lord and so if you stay in the lord then you are actually extremely powerful because you literally have resurrection power flowing into you on a daily basis to help you in all aspects of your christian walk you know whether it is attending to the needs of your family whether it is you you know um fulfilling your uh, your responsibilities in the you know in the community where you're staying whatever it is that you're putting your hands to whatever it is that you're taking up the resurrection power of christ flows into those areas you know of 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 your activities why because you are abiding in him you're connected with him your connection with him is strong uh, so because you are that strong there's going to be attacks against you you know is what paul is saying over here therefore you know he says you know you need to put on the full armor of god it's not enough to just put on one or two pieces of armor you know the ones which are more convenient and easy to put on no he says put on the full armor of god because only then you see you will be able to take your stand against the devil's schemes so the reason that we are putting on the armor the reason that we are guarding ourselves and protecting ourselves is because we are actually not ordinary people we are connected to the vine we are connected to jesus christ and jesus christ is the one who has this resurrection power and he's releasing that into our lives and there are many uh, amazing things that he wants to accomplish through us in partnership with us and because we are that powerful we need to stay on guard because we can be quite dangerous to the you know kingdom of hell and uh, so we need to protect ourselves uh, you know with the full armor of god so it's rather sad right we see a whole bunch of believers who are going around living such defeated helpless lives you know their own families are in a mess and they're not able to take care of their families because they are not really connected to the lord they're not abiding in him they're not able to hear his instructions on how they can help their family come out of the mess that it is in they are they're not able to use this resurrection power of christ that is in them you know to speak uh, life into their into their situations and so you have a whole bunch of very defeated people walking around even though they are supposed to be very very powerful why because they have not been wearing the armor they have not been shielding and guarding themselves by putting on the full armor and so because they are armorless they are no they have no covering they are you know exposed to danger the devil is taking full advantage and is attacking them and is seeing to it that that power which is in them will never be put to use it will just stay there dormant power not being used not being um, utilized for the things that you know god had meant you know for that person to accomplish using that power so um, this is a scheme of the devil he will make sure that we don't put on the armor uh, so that he can you know continue to attack us in all of those areas and so we need to put on the full armor so that we can you know use this great power that is in us to accomplish the things of god um so here uh, the the 
analogy that Paul uses is of the Roman soldier and his armor. Okay, so um, there are entire books written on this, on, on just this one passage. Uh, you know, so we are all very, very familiar already with you know with with what is you know discussed over here. Um, but you know, just for us to maybe touch upon a few details that uh, we kind of maybe sometimes miss, you know, when we are doing our reading on the subject. So it says, um, put on the full armor again. You know, which we already looked at. One or two pieces of armor will not do. We need to put on all of it. Put on the full armor, and then it says, full armor of God. So you see, this is a divine armor. It's not just something that uh, humans have created by their own strength. This is a divine armor with divine power to actually guard us completely. OK, so um, in that context, if we can look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. If someone could read out 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, so these, um, you know, the armor and the weapons and all of that which God has given, they are divine. So they actually contain the divine power to bring down the schemes of Satan. So if we actually cover ourselves in this divine armor, uh, we are protected. And not only are we protected, we can also attack. We can attack the evil one and destroy his schemes, you know, in, in our own lives and in the ministry that we are trying to do, you know, all the service that we are trying to offer, you know. So uh, we can actually even attack uh, Satan and defeat him when we are fully clothed in this divine armor. And um, um, uh, it says put on the full armor of God. So because it's the it is a divine armor which is given by the Lord, it only functions best when we have a right relationship with Him. Uh, so if we are having the wrong attitude and if we are not properly in sync, not synchronized with the Lord, then uh, the armor will not really be able to accomplish its powerful purpose. Uh, which is why it says in James 4, 7, that someone could read out James chapter 4, verse 7. So make yourself here for to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So the first thing is we have to submit ourselves to the Lord. Only when we are living in submission, only when we are in right relationship with him, then we will be able to resist the devil. So the armor is not going to work if we are not in a right relationship with the Lord. So we first have to obey we first have to trust, we have, we have to submit, and out of this right standing that we have with the Lord, then we will be able to resist the devil, and then he has no other choice but to flee. And uh, so then in verse 11, it goes on to explain, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, verse 12. If someone could read out verse 12, please. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Yeah. Um, so in the you know NIV, it uses the word struggle. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. In the uh, in the in the NKJV, it you know it says. Uh, uh, we are not wrestling with the with flesh and blood. So the word that is used over there, the Greek word, is actually a word that is related to, uh, you know, ancient Greek uh, violent sports. You know, uh, boxing and wrestling and all of that. That's the kind of struggle. That's the kind of word that is used over there, where they were, where you had to have two opponents literally fighting it out. 
in a struggle to the death you know almost there would be many occasions where the um, uh, you know the, if that other person the, the weaker opponent is not good enough he could you know, either sustain you know actual um, permanent damage or even die you know during the entire um, wrestling uh, or boxing you know match so uh, it was a it was not an not not a light hearted kind of a struggle so that's the word that paul uses over here you know because to show that this is no ordinary attack that's going to come against us it's going to be very intense because we are filled with such great power because we have the potential to accomplish such great things just by through simple faith and simple submission to the lord because of that the attack against us will be great the struggle will be intense and therefore we need to be on our guard it's not normal people that we are you know engaged in battle with we are in a life and death struggle you know it's like a struggle between evil and good and and the, and, and, and you know the, the kingdom of hell will not very easily give up so we are engaged in a battle with that kind of uh, you know with, with with those kind of forces and he goes on to describe what are the four levels of you know uh, demonic forces uh, which are at work against us okay so he talks about four levels of um, hierarchical authority that prevail in the kingdom of darkness uh, so at the highest level uh, the greek word that is used over there is arkas you know that's your word which we, we which we use out of which we have the english word archaic ancient we talk about archives you know old um, old records so the word arkas is talking about something very ancient so the, at the highest level you have this ancient ones so they are probably you know the the topmost angels that you know uh, supported uh, satan in his rebellion against the lord so maybe it's actually referring to those these are like the ancient ones they are the, like the the most powerful um, uh, you know angels who chose to side with satan and they fell they were all thrown out of you know heaven uh, so it's talking about the at the highest level it's talking about this chief highest ranking demonic powers so those are your arkas the next under them they, you know they delegate their power to a whole bunch of exousia the word exousia just literally means you know authorities so um the these ancient ones are the ones which hold all the power you know they were the ones who probably were you know created originally with amazing giftings great power um you know supernatural skills so they have it all and so they delegate their authority to a whole bunch of exousia a whole bunch of authorities this is delegated authorities which these delegated uh, you know powers hold that's the second level the second level of authorities hold delegated power in their hands under them you have a whole bunch of um, you know what they uh, the greek word says cosmo you know we, we are familiar with that right cosmo basically means world cosmo kratos kratos basically are rulers so cosmo kratos is basically world rulers so at the highest level you have the ancient ones the arkas under them you have the exousia the authorities who are holding delegated power and under them you have a whole bunch of world rulers they have probably kind of been assigned you know different sections of the world and said you know you have you're going to have authority over this portion of the world and then you're going to have authority over that portion and or something like that so you basically have all of these uh, cosmo kratos uh, the world rulers and under them you have a whole bunch of underlings uh, these are just your average evil spirits they go around doing the bidding of the higher powers uh, so you have these four uh, stages of of uh, authority in the you know in the kingdom of darkness and they are up against you because they recognize the damage that you can do if you realize the kind of power that you have in the lord and how you can use that power 
through simple trust in him through simple submission and obedience to him on a daily basis just by having that you can actually accomplish great things and so they do not want you to achieve that they do not want you to access the, uh, that power that is there in you and so they are up in battle against you and you need to guard yourself against them uh, by putting on the full divine armor that has been provided by the lord okay so yes um brother shay you go ahead with your question yeah yeah just just to gain clarity ma'am um mm. so what you're saying is um the highest of this group of demonics or when i say yeah. um that powers uh, the spiritual forces in heavenly places and then so that means in they, they exist in the spiritual realm and then you have the rulers and the uh, powers on the earth on the terrestrial realm I, I, am i mistaken to say that um is there two but, groups is it is there a hierarchy here that says this the first two they operate in the air and then the the another two which is which is um powers and authorities sorry rulers and authorities operate more on the terrestrial which is the earth would that be correct to say um, when we look at the greek there's nothing mentioned for the first two you just simply have the word arkas and then you have the word exousia you know those are your rulers and your authorities then the third one it calls them cosmo kratos so you know cosmo world uh, rulers so um, are they terrestrial are they functioning here on the earth they're all in a way functioning on, on the earth because they got kicked out of heaven and you know they were flung down below so uh, in a sense they are all off the air in the sense they're all in the functioning in the spiritual realm and we can't physically see them uh, but at the same time they're all operating in the world because they are no longer in heaven um, so in that sense they're all terrestrial and in that sense they're all off the air of the spiritual realm yeah i mean does it really matter whether they're like physically standing on the earth or whether they are up in the air their operation their functioning is happening here in the earth because the enemy is here on the earth we believers we are the enemy uh, and their um, basic battle is with us uh, so it is it's all happening here on the earth in that sense but it's happening in the spiritual realm and so we can't see it with our physical eyes does that help at all yes pastor that helps that helps yeah yeah uh so uh yeah it just talks about the powers of this dark world you know this kratos which is dark and then uh, it just talks about all the spiritual forces of evil or the evil you know evil spirits of the spiritual realm or it just differs i mean the translation differs from uh, you know version to version in english but these are the actual basic um, um greek words so the last category is just called you know evil they are the evil spirits so evil spirits operating in the uh, you know sp spiritual realm in the heavenly realm um so these are the powers which are up against us and okay uh, yeah uh, we have uh, brother christopher uh, yeah please go ahead uh, yes thank you pastor now i was actually just referring to uh, the uh, uh, james 4 7 or i'm referring to that where you know this mentioned they said therefore submit to god Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And um, um, I'm also trying to uh, understand, um, you know, uh, in another kind of scenario where, you know, Joseph, um, uh, in the in the Old Testament, uh, when he, uh, you know, he he flew, he he actually fled away from mm. from temptation, from sin, from uh, Potiphar's uh, wife. Uh, so in that sense. There was also, uh, you know, a, a devil or a demonic power uh, involved there, and he sort of, you know, he he fled away from it. So, um, my point is, there are times when you know we stand strong, and you know the devil is fleeing from us. Uh, but there are also 
some maybe circumstances where we need to flee away, you know, not out of fear, but basically we just need to get out of the situation and, uh, uh, you know, uh, just get away basically from, from that, from that, uh, uh, from that situation, uh, which is, which is, uh, you know, a, a demonic, uh, uh, you know, environment. So I just wanted to, you know, get your, get your, get your view on that. Yeah. I never thought about it, but I guess I would call it uh, a flight of victory and strength and a flight of defeat. You know, I would say I would use those two terms. So Joseph, when he fled, that was a flight of strength, a show of power, a demonstration of victory. It was totally a flight of victory. He is fleeing and showing, look, I'm going to serve my Lord. I'm not going to bend no matter what the pressure is, no matter what the consequences are. You know, I mean, I know that this, this can have, uh, uh, you know, repercussions on my job. I may, in fact, lose my job. I may end up in prison, but I am going to serve my Lord. And so I flee from this temptation in victory, in authority, in honor, you know, uh, honoring my Lord and my God. So that's a godly kind of flight. Um, on the other hand, when Satan flees from us after being defeated nicely, that's a flight of complete shame and humiliation. And, um, uh, you know, the parts who are watching him, you know, his, his underlings would think, ah, OK, he really got a bashing this time. So uh, there's a great difference. This is flight of victory where you're honoring the Lord and God glorifies you for that. And there's this very shameful and humiliating flight where you're fleeing because you got nicely bashed by the believers and now you you'll have to now go and you know think up some new strategy to come back and attack so there's a great difference in the kind of fleeing that we do we can do it in the power and authority of god to honor him and or you know we can be we can flee in defeat that should never happen to us that's something that should happen to satan again and again but not to us so yeah i guess that's that that would be my thought on that yeah yes yeah, thank you yeah so um so uh, yeah going back to that verse um the yeah it says put on the full armor of god you can take your stand against the devil's schemes um so over here uh, it's talking about taking a stand and not fleeing in shame not fleeing in defeat so uh, over here when it says so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes yes yes here it is saying don't you know uh, flee in shame and defeat that's something that should happen to satan not to us uh, so we are supposed to take a stand in victory and sometimes taking that stand may involve fleeing from temptation yeah, something like that uh, so, so, so it says, take your stand against the devil's schemes. And the word used over here for schemes uh, is supposed to be literally the word methods. Over the centuries, um, Satan, you know, he has experience when it comes to this whole uh, thing of, um, you know, crippling believers and, you know, undermining them and making them ineffective. He's tried out a whole bunch of things, I, I guess, over the years. And it's kind of, you know, um, polished his methods. So he has certain methodologies. You know, that's the word over there that is used, schemes. That word schemes means certain methods. He's come up with certain methodologies which work really, really well. They are effective 99% of the time. And so he basically uses those main methods to attack believers, um, you know, which is why if we were to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Verse 13, it kind of touches upon that concept. If someone could read out for us, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to men. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. Yeah. 
Uh, so we see over here in the first portion of 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. So there are certain fixed methods, methodologies that Satan has found effective. He uses them again and again. And so over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, Paul is assuring the believers and saying, what's happening to you right now, this, you know, this, these uh, temptations and trials that you're undergoing, it's not something new, something that has never happened to anyone before. These are all things which Satan has been trying out for centuries. These are all very normal, normal things. But Jesus Christ, you no know, God also has got certain escape plans for us. He, you know, he has come up with divine strategies on how to overcome each of these methods and methodologies. So he says it's nothing to be worried about. God is in charge. God is in control. He will only allow you to be attacked to the extent that you can bear at this particular you know, level of your spiritual growth. So um, the stronger you grow, the more experienced you grow in the Lord. You know, maybe the attacks, you know, God would allow greater levels of attack. But he knows where you are at spiritually. So he will only uh, you know, give you something that you will be able to bear. He will not allow any attack upon you that you will be unable to handle. OK, so um, so he, he, you know, Paul gives the assurance that each of us will be attacked uh, only to the extent that God allows, that God permits. And God permits uh, it to a certain extent to help us develop our wings, to learn how to fly to learn how to deal with you know this these kind of attacks so it's like as if we are under training and god already has got uh, it says provide a way out of it so that you can endure it so for each of these situations that come god has already you know uh, given strategies which we can use godly divine strategies which we can use to endure that temptation and not given to endure the temptation and hold on with the right attitude and you know not give up so um the lord will give that to us but for that you know we would have to wait upon him in prayer we would have to learn how to hear from him and so even as our bond with him grows stronger even as we are more and more connected to the wine we will be able to hear his instructions on how to escape what is the best uh, you know approach to use when you're under attack in that particular way so god will give us these things but then if the connection with god is very very weak when that attack comes we will only be able to hear the attack feel the attack we will not even be able to sense god because we are our connection is so weak so in times of peace it's better to you know keep our uh, connection strong and develop and nurture that connection because when the time of attack comes at that time we already would have gained some experience on hearing from him you know learning how to hold on to scripture you would have had some experience in all of that then we will be able to you know apply these divine strategies that god is giving so during times of peace and calm rather than being spiritually lazy we need to nurture our bond and connection with him so that when the time of attack comes we will be ready you know to handle uh, whatever comes to us um now uh, we could not really touch upon the armor of god uh, you know um, which it talks about the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness and all of that um uh, yes, yes, brother Christopher, go ahead. Oh, yes, Pastor. So I think you've, you know, you've touched upon an interesting point, um, you know, where, you know, where the intensity of the attack and the uh, is more. And uh, as we grow spiritually uh, and mature, uh, we are, um, we are, we are given, uh, you know, the strength to, to be able to withstand that, that those, that attack attack so just just to understand uh, you know the uh, and if you have some kind of example of that um you know that may have that uh, you yourself may have gone through if, if that's possible or otherwise you know if you've heard of you know how that how the intensity of the attack has uh, you know increased um and uh, you know over over time 
you know, with a with a believer who has you know matured and then been been able to withstand that attack. Yeah, I just wanted to ask if you could give us an example. Mm. I mean, attacks are so varied and so wide in variety. Um, um, you know, something as simple as unanswered prayer. I remember in the early days, if then if, if God would not answer something, then I would immediately have all these thoughts attacking me, you know, saying, oh, see, God does not really care. And then, uh, you know, you, you start feeling angry and you feel uh, betrayed. And, you know, you, there's a lot of uh, battle going on inside your mind where uh, Satan is attacking you from many directions uh, to kind of make you stop trusting in God, to make you feel bitter against God, and um, maybe to even lose hope that you know things are ever going to work for you in your life and all of that. And the issues actually that were um, you know being dealt with at that time were not even that major. But uh, you know all these um, thoughts would come against God, against the ever having you know victory over say over the uh, situations of my life and all of that so gradually over time i began to know the character of god better i grew stronger in him i renewed my mind uh, i began to be able to hear him better so now uh, there are much bigger unanswered prayers i mean this affects not just me you know it affects my entire family these are big things that we are praying for and i do not ha ha yet see the answer to some of those but now when i look at myself there is so much peace on the inside there's so much confidence and security on the inside because um now even though the attack is greater i can hear him better my goodness when you know in times of despair when things are really go bad I can literally, I'm bombarded with scriptures on Feb 3rd. That was, some that was a tough day for me. And I literally had, I think, seven, eight scriptures come to me. And God said, see, look, I'm for you. I'm going to deal with this. And so uh, you know, I did not go into despair. I did not allow that bitterness to rise up and say, ha, see, look what God is. I mean, after all the service that I have done, look what God did all that did not happen because i was able to hit those things you know which, which satan was ending immediately with the scriptures and say no god is standing for me and uh, so i can see a great difference the level of intensity of the situations will increase but you also would have now increased more in your ability to stand on scripture so you're able to have greater victory so I just used one example. You know, it can happen in all areas, you know, areas or different areas where just Satan is trying to you know, draw you away from God and draw you into despair, draw you into failure, draw you into sin and all of that. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that helped, but uh, I meant intensity in that sense. The situations get more intense. There's more to be lost. Uh, but at the same time, um, God's equipping is also greater. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing, to our Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. We are out of time. Maybe we will touch upon the armor. You know, it's kind of <laughs> wrong to not touch upon the armor. Uh. So we'll do that next class. Uh. You know, and we'll also you know start off with our um, um Philippians. Uh. So, but you know, right now let's just conclude with a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you so much that uh, you have taught us so many truths today. Help us a lot to imitate you, to follow your example, and to walk in the way of love in all of our relationships. Because, Lord, when we do that, um, Lord, um, because we are honoring you, you will take care of all the details. You will help us a lot uh, in the situations that we face. Also, we pray that, Lord, understanding who we are in you, we would guard ourselves so that we can accomplish what you have you know, set before us and we would experience victory rather than defeat. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much for holding on till the end. Uh, we'll meet again next class.